everybody, I'm Phoenix Morningstar. Um, I'm presenting mostly on my work, uh, on my research so far on using poppy seeds for fuel and fertilizer in Afghanistan primarily. Uh, in the last couple of years, this work's been uh, kind of a uh, labor of love. Uh, sometimes not a lot of support, but oftentimes uh, support from really odd places. Um, so this work's been supported by, of course, MSPhD and IVP, also the Society of Global Health Researchers in Action, and uh, also through the Mass Bioenergy Pro Program at Colorado State University that's funded through the National Science Foundation's IGER program. Um, so I know this is a little bit small for those of you in the back, because I've been in the back all day, but primarily what we're looking at for this project is that uh, the opium trade in, uh, in Afghanistan basically funds everything worldwide when it comes to heroin trade. And so most of the farmers that grow this don't really make a whole lot of money out of the program themselves, if you want to call uh, the drug trade a program. Uh, <laughs> but yet a lot of the international programs that look at anti-narcotics basically burn down these people's livelihoods. So our goal was to try to find out if there's something positive we can make out of their waste products. So uh, as you can imagine, my mom's really proud, sent me to college so I can learn about drugs. <laughs> um, so this is kind of a map of uh, the opium trade uh, throughout the, US, the, the world, mostly in Southeast Asia. And what we found is that when opium is produced or heroin is going to be produced from the poppy plants is that the seeds are actually a waste product. So they incise the, the plant, take out the latex, it's kind of like tapping a tree for maple syrup, and then they just leave the rest to just go to waste essentially. And so we thought, well, what if we can actually make a, a biofuel out of that to improve uh, farmers' livelihoods there? And so that's what we spent uh, a lot of time in the last year working on, is uh, building um, in trial and error in ways that we can actually crush these little tiny poppy seeds, these are the same seeds that you would use uh, on, on your bagels, so they're really tiny seeds, and actually extract that oil, which we actually were able to do. But we didn't want to just make another product and then end up with another waste that was going to cause problems, so we also went to another level and said, well, what can we do with the waste product from this production should the oil actually become viable as a fuel product? And so we actually asked the question, well, what if we could use it as a fertilizer or an animal feed? So we went on to analyze our waste product as well. So here's our result. Results just kind of in short term. Uh, kind of number one is can we use the, the, the oil as a uh, fuel source and kind of secondarily to that is can we produce it in Afghanistan in rural areas where maybe you don't have access to an electronic seed press that's going to test the heat and the pressure and all that. Can you actually do it mechanically? And so that's what we did was we just made it out of blood, sweat, and tears sometimes, actually. And then we analyzed the oil and found that uh, it actually has really good ratios that would make it viable for a fuel. Uh, keep in mind that there is a war going on in that area, um, and there's a lot of um, conflict going on. And so a lot of things that you would normally do to make a biofuel straight up uh, is to go ahead and transesterify your straight vegetable oil, but a lot of things that you would actually import people could make bombs out of that if you were to actually import some of these things. So we stuffed with a straight vegetable oil to be used. Uh, and then the next step was to actually look at what would it look like as a fertilizer. Our numbers aren't anything great, but at the same time we weren't building a fertilizer. But it does have some really strong NPK uh, values so far as nitrogen, potassium, and uh, phosphorus in there. And then next, which was really some of the more interesting work that we came up with so far as results was, can we use this as an animal feed as well? And it turned out it has almost 170% more protein uh, mm -hmm. than your typical beef or chicken feed, so that was pretty cool. And then energetic-wise, uh, the poppy press cake, after it's come out of the seed press, is actually about 20% more energetic than corn or alfalfa, so we've definitely got a viable uh, um, product here, and, and so far as our co-products as well. Um, so basically our final conclusions are, yes, it can be done if you're willing to crush these little seeds up. Uh, two, yes, it's actually a good uh, fuel source, uh, and the press cake is viable as a fertilizer and an animal feed. So that kind of wraps up where I've been over the last year or so. Sorry this slide didn't come out the way I wanted it to exactly in the presentation form, but uh, I guess I've got enough time to talk a little bit more about kind of what I've been up to. Uh, to make this all happen, actually. So my background was originally in mathematics as an undergrad, and then I went to biostatistics and looked into epidemiology as well, and then ended up going into international environmental law as a um, Rotary ambassadorial scholar. And while I was working for Rotary in uh, New Zealand, I also ended up working for the U.S. State Department, which is where I kind of got into climate change a little bit more, working on climate policy in the South Pacific, and that all kind of 
brought me right on into coming up with a product that could actually be positive for the world as well. So uh, thanks for your time. and. Um,